What's going on guys? This is Miasin and welcome to my uh, Punk Synchro Brave deck. I, I guess that would be the name of the deck because we're playing like 10 billion different engines in it. And when your normal summon of choice for the deck is Sangan, you definitely know that you're playing a good stuff deck, honestly. You're not playing like a one archetype. No, 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 you're not doing that. You're playing literally, <laughs> what is this? Like one Foxy Tune, one Dierno, double Ziamen. That's it. That's it for the punks. And then for the adventure, obviously the standard triple Aquamancer. Triple Riot, one Griffin, the Eclipse spell, the, the, the Continuous spell. Bro, it's everything. It's just a bunch of good cards that work well with each other. Or sometimes not even that much. And you're like, bro, it's a one, it's a good one card to have. I might as well play it. And it's it allows you to play a lot of hand shops. And even the hand shops can be good because you can normal summon them in the deck and do stuff with it. So imagine when you normal summon Valor, you make Needle Fiber and then you kill your opponent three seconds later. That actually rhymed. <laughs> yeah, you're so funny. You're so funny, Axide. Anyways, for the deck profile, before we get into any of this, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate you in advance. And now let's get right into it. So one Foxy Tune, of course, with one Dear Note, Double Ziam and Triple Emergency Teleport. We went over this, uh, th what, 20 seconds ago? <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I'm really trying to play this uh, minimalistic as possible because... Uh, Ziamen is not an actual good card to draw, as shocking as this may sound, because if you have to normal summon it to use the effect, then the uh, it, it really will conflict with Rite of Aramisia, and it does make some hands worse. Really similar to drawing like a Luber and Rite of Aramisia, and that's the reason why the Brave Despia was like garbage. So yeah, the, the, don't do that. Anyways, for the Brave token cards, uh, speaking of the Devils, one grip, yeah, actual Devils, man. Hopefully these cards get banned or s d d die or something. Well, n maybe not banned, but just. I just want you guys to die. That, that's that's all I'm asking for. <laughs> yeah, one Griffin, of course, triple Aquamancer, triple uh, whatever, and then uh, yes. So I'm not playing Foolish Burial, but you could play the card because it's actually not too bad. But it doesn't really get much. Well, actually, yeah, no, no, you, can, you definitely could be playing Foolish Burial, honestly. I know every single deck that plays the Brave Token engine always plays Foolish Burial, even if the deck itself doesn't really care about the card, just because it's like a seventh copy of Aquamancer, so you might as well. Anyways, we're obviously playing the Artifact Scythe because we're trying to Scythe uh, combo our opponent. Scythe Turbo, not really combo, yes. And uh, another really interesting thing about Artifact Scythe in this deck is that you don't necessarily have to summon it off of, you know, the interaction with TG Wonder Magician, Artifact Dagda, etc. No, 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 no. You can Foolish for Artifact Scythe with the Shooting Riser Dragon, and then you have a level 2 Shooting Riser Dragon so you can sync with the Chaos Ruler, make a Baroness, and then on your opponent's standby phase, you can revive back the Artifact Sight, the Artifact Sight, so if your opponent was, like, relying on Dark Ruler very specifically to play, unfortunately, the Dark Ruler is not going to be doing anything, because at that point, you would already would have resolved the Artifact Sight, and that would have been game over. Of course, Fairy Tail Snow with Token Collector, these cards are very similar in a way, not really, well, I mean, obviously, in terms of their effects, they're, like, very different, because... This is kind of like a hand shop and a grave trap. This is only a grave trap, so not a hand shop, obviously. But both both cards are very good to discard. They're very good to foolish off of shooting riser dragon. This is like a um, silver bullet against sword soul and all the other uh, brave strategies. So even against like Sanavalon, this could be pretty good. But it's not necessarily a turn skipper against a few decks because they might still be able to play. It's just that their end board will be significantly worse. And then for the Red Rose Rocks Rules package, obviously it's only th three cards because the Red Rose got limited. So one Red Rose, one Rocks Rose, one Basil Rose Shoot. Of course, this I don't really have to explain it for the 37th time. Triple Sandgan. So when you link off Sandgan either for El Mirage or Cherubini or anything else, you can either search for Crusadia Arborea, which is a very fantastic tutor monster that has an inherent effect not an activated effect to special summon itself to a zone a link monster points to. Or you could simply search a hand shop, so even if you're scared of getting Dark Ruler or Forbidden Droplet, you would have a piece of interaction in your hand, so that you don't have to solely rely on what is on your field. So yeah, anyways, uh, for the hand shops, Triple Ash, Double Ghost Mourner, Triple Veiler, Triple Drool. I have a, literally no arguments for Ghost Mourner outside of the fact that it's a level 3 tuner monster. And it's a hand shop, I, I, I guess, but... <laughs> You could play Ghost Ogre, you could play, I guess, Imperm, but this time Imperm literally has zero synergies, so I don't know if you really want to do that. Honestly, even Droll doesn't really have any synergy, but I guess at least it is a hand shop that is very good against most of the meta, whereas Imperm, you can already fulfill its role with Effect Veiler, so it's like, eh, do you really want to do that? And uh, yeah, that's a lot of hand shops, man, like freaking 11 or something, not too bad. And of course, the Jet Synchron, because it's broken to summon off of Needle Fiber, 
Needle Fiber is a one card Baron plus Scythe obviously, but that would of course lose the Dark Ruler since you would be achieving it on your opponent's main phase. And of course Double Magician Souls and Triple Illusion of Chaos, very sacky with like Red of Aramisia because you get three monsters on the field, draw two, like a Nomni Negate, everything man, it's like... It's literally a plus 11 on its own. <laughs> it's actually a plus 3, but th th that's still way more than enough. Hey, hold on, is it a plus 3 or plus 4? It, it doesn't matter. It's it's broken. Smile. Anyways, for the other cards, one call by the grave, no shit. Triple emergency teleport, no shit again. Yes, 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 and uh, keg W. Alright, for the extra deck, one Cheng Ying. Don't really think you necessarily have to play this. It's really me because I feel like sometimes I can easily make level 10 synchro monsters on top of Baron, which might be a little cocky, so <laughs> yeah, if you feel like this never comes up, honestly, just remove it. It's really not, like, set in stones, but the Baron, you definitely need it, and the Hot Red, the reason why it's there is because it can be very interesting on your opponent's turn, and the reason why I'm saying that is because if you, let's say, get hit by Dark Ruler, one thing that you could do would be, like, chaining a quickly spell card on your opponent's turn, such as Call by the Grave, Emergency Teleport, or Basil Roll Shoot, and then to your own quickly spell card, you chain a Hot Red, to negate the Dark Ruler no more, and that way you can negate Dark Ruler with Hot Red, which is something that Baron simply cannot do. So that's why I said that it's interesting, and it's easy to make because of the Jet Synchron and the Chaos Ruler, and these cards both have, uh, you know, Recursion from the Graveyard. So usually you can't do that on top of Dagda with Needle Fiber, so it's not really like you had to give up on anything. And then after that, we have, of course, Chaos Ruler, which I'm not even gonna bother explaining. You have a bunch of Light and Dark Monsters in this deck, but... The Dark Monsters definitely are scarce, I'm not gonna lie, so reviving back the Chaos Ruler sometimes can be a little tricky. You might have to, like, get access to Sangan or something like that, that or the Red Rose, or Ro Rocks, Rose, Dragon Monsters, Magician Souls, Illusion of Chaos, etc. But the Light Attribute Monster, you will pretty much always have it by default simply because of Foxy Tune. So even if you barely play any Light Monsters, that is never really an issue. Whereas if you play, let's say, Ogre Dance, you don't have to care about anything because you have both the Dark, which is the Ogre Dance, and the Light, which is the Foxy Tune. But then the issue with Ogre Dance is that uh, your normal summon would be the Xiamen, which would make the Rite of Aramisia infinitely worse. Anyways, for the other cards, one TG Wonder Magician. That's how you pop your own Scythe and then you quick sync into Baron. Herald of the Arc Light, you can easily make this with Magician Souls and any level 3 tuner, such as Red Rolls, Rock Rolls, whatever. And then this, once, this, once this negates, you can search the Illusion of Chaos to search Magician Souls again. And this is also a card that allows you to protect yourself from Forbidden Droplet. And for the Link Monsters, Access Code, Celine, Dark, Dagda, Needle Fiber, Cherubini, uh, El Mirage, and either Relinquished our Anima or Link Kribo, I don't think it matters that much. For the idea section, I really don't have uh, too much to cover here. Xiamen, if you really, and Ogre Dance, if you really want to play that build, but again, you're gonna have to cut like the Brave Token cards, which makes the deck so good. And if you cut the Brave Token cards, you might as well also cut Illusion of Chaos and Magician. Uh, don't, don't go that rabbit. No, no, don't go that down that hole. It's really not freaking worth it. Anyways, the other Link monsters that you could potentially play, but I really don't recommend it again. Appaloosa, maybe Lina, maybe Hita. I already, already playing Cherubini, what the frick? And uh, I have no idea what terraforming is doing here. So yes, that's pretty much it for this uh, Punk Synchro Adventure deck profile. Let me know your thoughts about this deck in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.